Every investment strategy hails a king and the castle he built. With value investing, it's Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway. For index funds, it's John Bogle and the Vanguard Group. And when it comes to quant investing, we need to look no further than Jim Simmons and Renaissance Technologies. If you're hearing Renaissance Technologies for the first time, and there's always a first time, it is the most successful and profitable hedge fund in investing history. In numbers, their flagship fund, the Medallion Fund, has delivered a post-fee annualized return of 39% over the last 30 years. Which means if one had invested $10,000 in the Medallion Fund when it started in 1988, that $10,000 would now be worth $377 million. So how does Renaissance Technologies, or Rentech as it's generally called, do this? Well, the firm's success is attributable to an evolving series of mathematical and quantitative models that are constantly discovering trading signals. It's an approach that was pioneered by Rentech's founder, Jim Simmons, who then brought in mathematicians, statisticians, signal analysts, and even astronomers to improve the models. For instance, one of the early models they used was a simple mean reversion model. So every security has a mean, and if the price veered above a trend line, then it is sold, and if it fell below, then it is bought. Now this might sound very elementary to you now, but back in the 1980s, this was a revolutionary idea. And like what happens to all revolutionary ideas, the competition caught up to it, and this early quant model started to lose its utility. This was when Jim Simmons and his team started developing new models based on non-linearity and pattern analysis, which they put together in a sort of a machine learning environment. As a matter of fact, one approach which really catapulted the fund's performance was to focus on shorter term trades. That is, you go in and you come out of a trade in super quick time. To put super quick in numbers, Rentech had cut its average holding time from 10 days, which itself is quite short, to as low as one and a half days. And the results were almost immediate. The short-term trades allowed Rentech to score profits almost on a daily basis, which then started the Medallion Fund's incredible streak of year after year after year of superlative performance. So to put all this together, what Renaissance Technologies has been doing is using massive computing power with quantitative trading techniques. This helps them discover trading patterns and pricing anomalies, which in turn helps them assess the statistical probability on the direction of a securities price in any given market. You must have realized it by now, but let me say it for the sake of clarity. When we refer to quant funds in this video, we are specifically talking about quantitative funds and not the quant mutual fund company although Quant Mutual Fund also has a Quant Fund. All right, so Quant-styled mutual funds follow a partly active, partly passive investing approach. What I mean is that while the fund manager is in charge of the eventual investment decision, their actions are however guided by a set of rules that decide on the course of action. Now, there are essentially three steps in constructing a quantitative fund the input system, the forecasting engine, and the portfolio construction. The first step is where all the necessary inputs are provided. This includes data points like the interest rate, inflation, consumer sentiments, a company's revenue growth, earnings, cost of capital, and dozens of other variables. Then, an initial screening is done to remove all the undesirable factors like high volatility, unmanageable debt, inefficient capital allocation, etc which then leaves us with a curated list of acceptable companies. The second step in the process is the forecasting stage. And this is where the model rules are defined along with an estimation for expected return, price, risk parameters, and other related metrics. And the final step is portfolio construction where a model portfolio uses optimizers and heuristic-based systems to explain which stock to buy and in what percentage should it be bought. This gives us a curated, objective, and templated portfolio, which is also referred to as the Quant Fund Model Portfolio. Quant funds come with three primary benefits. 
Firstly, they are expected to follow a standard process and model, which then lends a lot of predictability and explainability to the results. Secondly, quant funds are devoid of human biases, which means all investment decisions are objective in nature. And finally, there is the scalability factor wherein these trading algorithms can be improved with constant testing and prototyping. So standardization, objectivity and scalability. When it comes to the concerns or issues surrounding quant investing, perhaps the most cited one is the empirical bias. What this means is that since these models are based on past data and statistical models, they find it difficult to chart out new scenarios like an unexpected market movement or a market disruption. A good example of this is what happened with Rentec since 2020 when their model could not adequately adjust to the market fall that we saw in the month of March. Consequently, the year 2020 was one of their worst years in terms of performance, which has led to investors pulling out over $11 billion from the fund in the first nine months of 2021. A second concern with quant funds is their lack of transparency or as it's called their black box approach. In other words, quant fund managers guard their models very closely and rarely share its design or workings. Now there's nothing wrong with this. After all, the quant team is only protecting its intellectual property. But nevertheless, secrecy does have some risks that investors should be ready to understand and accept. Quant funds are classified based on the quantitative factors that goes into their investing model. While there is no dearth of factors, the more popular ones that come across are factors like low volatility, value, size, quality, liquidity, and momentum. Now, each of these factors can be thought of as a broader theme, and what really defines their underlying characteristics are the metrics that are used to create them. For instance, the value factor is a combination of different metrics like the P ratio, the PB ratio, price to sales, the dividend yield, etc. Similarly, other factors make use of other metrics and quantitative methods. Now, of course, none of this is standardized. Every analyst, every fund house would have a different model and method to define what is momentum, what is quality and what is value. Quant funds in India are either based on a single factor or follow a multi-factor model. For a long time, the single factor model was the most common quantitative technique. However, with improvement in computing power and research capabilities, we are now seeing many quant funds making use of multiple factors. For instance, the Axis Quant Funds model uses three factors, which are quality, growth and value. In fact, the DSP Quant Fund also uses the same three factors as the Axis Quant Fund, although I'm sure the actual model is likely to have a number of differences. Incidentally, the Tata Quant Fund also uses three factors, but in this case, the growth factor is replaced with the value factor in the development of their quantitative model. Quant funds in India are a novelty and started emerging only from the year 2019 onwards. In fact, as it stands, there are six quant funds in the country which have a combined AUM of just over 3,000 crores with the Axis Quant Fund and the DSP Quant Fund garnering most of the assets. Now, every quant fund would have its own methodology blueprint, but as an illustration, let's understand how the DSP Quant Fund is designed in four simple steps. Step one is to pick a universe of companies, which in DSP's case are the companies that make up the S&P BSE 200 index. Step two is to eliminate the bad companies, which then leaves us with the good companies, metaphorically speaking. The third step is to rank these good companies on three distinct factors, that is quality, growth, and value. These are factors that DSP has chosen as a part of their quant fund. And the fourth and final step is to assign weights of the selected companies based on acceptable sector, stock, and liquidity exposure. And what we get as an output from this four-step process is a list of 30 to 50 stocks that become DSP's quant-derived model portfolio. 
So in effect, what DSP's model has done here is to convert sound investing principles around quality, growth, and valuation into a rules-based investment process. Now, an important part of any quant model is the simulation of different market and economic conditions and the backtesting of it based on the actual data. DSP Quant Fund's presentation deck shows that their quant model has been backtested and the results compared with three benchmarks, the BSE 200 TRI index and two internal portfolios which are based on high beta and high debt. The comparison shows that DSP's quant model would have performed better than the three benchmarks, not only in terms of returns, but also when it comes to risk management. In other words, the quant model does promise a superior risk adjusted return, at least from a historical backtesting perspective. And the simulated overperformance is not just for DSP's model. In fact, every fund house that has a quant model or is coming up with one will show investors that it is handsomely beating the benchmark. Take for instance, the Access Quant Fund. Now their presentation shows that their model has outperformed the benchmark in 10 out of the last 14 years by an incremental 7.6%, which is pretty big. Further, the literature also says that the Access Quant model has never delivered negative returns on a three year rolling return basis. So depending on the rules and conditions that every fund house has set for the quant model, one can expect a different return risk combination for each of the quant funds. To help you with what these specifics are, we have compiled a list of presentations and literature that different fund houses have put on their respective website. This list is available in the description of this video. So please do access the same and understand them before investing in any quant fund. All said and done, the Medallion Fund, which is one of the world's most successful funds, is a quant fund, and that should tell us something. Simply put, for all the uncertainty and risk that the financial markets go through, quant investing brings to the table objectivity, standardization, scalability, and of course, low cost. So the question is, should one invest in quant funds? Now, beyond the advantages and concerns that we have already discussed in this video, Let's also consider a key insight that keeps coming up in our research. So what a number of global studies are saying is that while the backtesting simulations often show excellent overperformance for these funds, the actual performance that shows up after two, three, four years of running a quant fund is good, but not that good, as in it is not as good as what one might perceive it to be. Now you might be wondering why, and the answer to that seems to be coming from the risk return balance that we discussed earlier. You see, what's coming out is that many quant funds have a better record in terms of downside protection rather than offering stupendous returns, which in our view is still okay because it offers investors a better risk adjusted return. Now we mentioned this particular insight largely because quant funds are very new in India and the observations we see globally might also be seen in our country. Of course, there is nothing wrong here, but the idea is to be prepared with the right set of expectations when investing in something as novel as a quant fund. However, in our opinion, we do think quant funds make a compelling case for investment on account of firstly being a smarter alternative to a market capped index fund. Secondly, quant funds do promise returns in excess of the benchmark with better management of risk. Thirdly, quant models are evolving and will continue to get better over time. And finally, there is the cost element and quant funds are somewhere in the middle of a pure play index fund and an actively managed fund. But having said this, it is still important to be prudent and pragmatic, which means to look at dedicating only some part of one's portfolio in this category of funds. And if you can do this on an SIP basis, then it's all the more better. Also, since quant funds don't have a performance history in India, investors should keep an eye on the fund's performance from time to time and invest strictly on a long-term basis. And with this, we come to the end of this video. If you learned something new today, then please be sure to like this video, subscribe to the ET Money YouTube channel and share this video with your friends. Once again, thank you for your time and I look forward to catching up with you next week with another insightful video. Until then.
Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.